What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be going over some gaming with the Scoia'tael deck. Um, you will see, if you haven't already watched it, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you can see me going through and talking through the deck guide. Um, let's get into some games and we can show you how this deck works in practice. So one of the things we talked about in the guide is this deck is full of combinations. One of the things I look for when playing a deck, especially when you spend all that time you know, uh, and resource crafting the cards that you want, is I want a deck that I'm not going to get bored of after you know playing it for one night. And this deck is definitely one of those decks. And the reason why you won't get bored is because there are so many ways to win and lose with this deck. So here we go, guys. Let's get into the mulligan. So I like to have a good look before I discard anything to see exactly what I've, I've got. And I like to go all the way on and just see... You know, what golden legendaries we've got, etc. We've only got one at the minute. Um, the next thing I'm looking for is we're really looking for elven mercenaries. One commando, two commandos is good as well because we can bounce things back. Uh, I don't want two hawker support and I don't want a hawker healer. So let's just have a little look. We've still got quite a lot of magic here. So I think we're going to get rid of one tremors. And... We will ignore, because on the first turn with Scoia'tael, what we want to be doing is letting the coin toss decide who goes first. Now, I have made just a couple of um, alterations from the deck guide. I've put in two Hawker supports, just trying this out. Uh, not, it's not really a deck based built around um, uh, you know, buffing Hawker supports with potions. The main reason why they're in there is because a i don't have the aromancy card which i really want but also because um, you really i was feeling like i could really do with something to play in this exact instance so turn one what is the card that you play because most of these cards are sort of like removal so what we've got here is an opportunity to just jump jump down drop down sorry a, 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 a card um when there's no opposing board to to remove Then we'll play uh, mercenary. Everything all right. So we have a lot of spells in this deck, a lot of special cards, and what we're looking to do is to draw through our deck, play as many of our special cards as possible, so that we can trigger our gold card Ingram. Okay, so he's going to play a potion. So this is where the commandos come in, guys. So we can play the commando, bounce back the elven mercenary. This is a standard, anyone who plays Scoitel knows, this is a really standard um, tactic. Um, and it brought, pulled out the decoy, which um, is actually pretty good there, because um, that thins our deck, if you think about it. We've played through another card. We're now down to only 13 left. Okay. The, the other thing about that play, sorry, is that Iglace means now that when, when we play Iglace, he re he resurrects a non-gold special card from either graveyard. So we can now use the decoy to um, from, from there to gain card advantage. Uh, as you can see, we've already got a slight card advantage because we've played decoy once, but we can potentially play it uh, with Iglace. Then we could use our special character and do it again. So um, let's see how this one unfolds. So what we're going to do is... We're now just going to play another another mercenary. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. And we get another decoy <laughs> from nature's gift. Okay, that's another thing as well. Um, I have thought quite long and hard about the special cards you play in this deck. I basically can't really draw a dud. The only way I could draw a dud is nature's gift off the back of him playing a spell or a special card beforehand um that's the only way you can really draw a dud everything everything else is pretty much acceptable and i've tried playing around with other combinations and other special cards and i found that uh, you know things like scorch and thunder and it just really messed things up so this is all designed in for a reason so i think what we're going to do is go ahead and just tremor here So 
seems to be having a very com contemplating turn. You know, we were saying at the start of this game that we always have options. You can see we've got Aglaise in hand. We've now got quite a lot of special cards in the graveyard already, so we could get value from. If we need a double value from that, we can use um, we can use our Agni or Ethni, however you want to pronounce the hero power to trigger uh, Aglaise again. So I think what I'm going to do is just drop a mercenary. Have strength, my love. So every time we do this mercenary, we are dis we are playing that spell. We're drawing it out of our deck and playing the spell, so it goes into our graveyard. And you can see our deck count now. We're down to eleven. So we are at 36, so we could swipe this or we could Elven Mercenary and continue with drawing. We could even play that because we're so far ahead. But usually I like to play Yavin after I've won a round. So I'm actually tempted to just play the Mercenary. I don't want to say that. Yeah. Actually no, I'll tell you what, we're gonna play we're gonna play lacerate. We're gonna lacerate. Now we don't really have our finishers in hand, so one tactic you can employ here in this kind of situation is to try and look to use Eglace, Eglace to on, on things like the last wish and that's why that card is is incredibly versatile in this deck because once we've got the last wish we could use Eglace to essentially give us three last wishes So I think we're going to lacerate again. You cross the wrong sorceress. So we have a couple of options here. So one thing we could do is we could obviously just drop the mercenary. Okay, drop the mercenary, play a spell. Another thing we could do is we could actually play Yavin and give ourselves a huge card advantage and then pass and go to lose the turn. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with the gameplay, guys. There's so many options. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to play the Yavin option. No existence, no such thing. Okay, so this is good. So we picked up Instagram, which is one one of our finishers. Not your lucky day. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're just going to pass there. So you could see already so far we've had two very different lines of play. Okay, we could have gone with winning that round and gone down that line of play. I do often like to win the first round. Or we could have gone with the route that we did take. So I can actually ignore the ability. Normally I would let my opponent go first, but because he won, 
Um, that means that he he's essentially allowed to. Uh, he sorry, he, he essentially has to go first because he because he won the last round. So no need to use our Spurs Tell ability there. Instead, we'll save it for the third turn because obviously we need to win this round now. Okay, so one thing we can do here, which is quite nice, is we can just hit with one of our archers. You can try to win them all, but you won't. So I think now is the time to play the merc final mercenary. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Can't take it anymore. Lie still. Lots of options here with Aglaise. What I'm actually going to do is just play a Lacerate. And that shows the flexibility of this card, because I would very rarely use a la use Aglaise to, to play a Lacerate. But obviously with him only having one card left, um, it's not a bad play. So we can pass here. And then we can now use our faction ability to allow the uh, Northern Realms guy to go first. He's only got two cards. As you can see, we've built up a huge, uh, huge card advantage by passing when we did, by using the faction power correctly, and by using the decoy um, has given us an adv advantage. Adrenaline. Okay, that's very good. So we'll play Thoraville. Brings out his witches. Okay, so we will... I'll play this. No mercy. I shall not fail. And this allows us to now play Yennefer, Hero Power, now Yennefer again on the buffs. And before we do that, now we can even we play Milva to return one of the witches. Like the way you so, die, human. so he's passed, which gives us a benefit there. And then what we can do is play. Oh, what a bummer! He didn't want to. He didn't want to let us. But you can see just how how ridiculously strong our end game was there. We still had, on top of all that, we we could have played Milva, got Toraville back, got rid of one of his witches. Then we could have Yennefer down, given plus two to everything. Then we could have used our Etni uh, hero power, bounced Yennefer back, played Yennefer again, given everything another plus two. Would have been an extremely powerful end game. So that's it, guys. That is my winning with Scrotel deck. I hope you liked it. Um, if you want to see more from me, hit subscribe just below. Um, I will be producing loads of content. I've got lots of stuff planned for the YouTube channel. I also stream on a on Twitch on um, a Monday to Thursday. You can catch me there on, twi tw on twitch.tv forward slash BJ the, BJ the Brave. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at BJ the Brave. I'm in capital letters, Gwent. Thanks for watching, guys.